Today, it's my pleasure to be joined by my friend Josh Eidman to kind of go behind the scenes of some of his favorite adventure photos. Josh takes epic photos in ridiculous locations like this. Well, hey everybody, Hudson here, and I I'm so stoked to have Josh with me today. Hey, Josh. Josh is down uh, just outside Eugene in a cabin where he lives when he's not out on big adventures, toting camera gear around. And he's done some just really inspirational work. I can't really wait to get you guys in looking at the images. So I want to do that as quick as we can. Just want to remind everybody, sign up for Office Hours. That's that free uh, Zoom meeting or YouTube Live meeting with me and my friends. You know, We're going to go over your images, go over your questions. It's free for everybody. Sign up at HudsonHenry.com slash office hours are on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. So uh, let's jump in. Let's talk to Josh. And Josh, I, I'm, I'm really, really thankful for you being here. And I want to just uh, share people share with people the amazing images that you create. So you mind like sharing your screen and uh, and we'll just uh, just jump in and have a look at some of this stuff. Oh, man, just yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to be here. Thank you, Hudson. It's like, yeah, so just I, I, you can talk through some of the setup, some of the gear that you use, what got you into doing this stuff. But like, let's just do it as we look through these these shots. I mean, talk through the red color and this water coming through this snow cave. This is on, on Mount Hood. Yeah. So this is pure imagination cave on Mount Hood. And th actually, this section of the cave is no longer there. It just has collapsed and melted and is gone. Um, but yeah, this is a sunset shot taken during a uh, seven day expedition in 2015. Um, <clears throat> and the red light happens from the sun being just at the perfect angle um, to shine in through the entrance that we're looking at and it is illuminating the water red. And it, it happened two nights that week. And it was really, really unbelievable. I mean, so beautiful. Could wow. bring tears to my eyes. <laughs> it's like it's like that horsetail falls moment that everybody goes after in February in Yosemite, except it was even more ephemeral because it's only going to happen at the right time of year in this cave that collapsed. So, wow, just a stellar shot, man. It, it, you know, the, when you first brought your photography to me, jo Josh has been friends with my wife, Stacy, for years. And that's how I actually met Josh. And uh, and he came to me with his photography and I was just like, wow, your sense of composition and the crazy places you're getting are just so spot on, you know, you're, you're a dead natural when it comes to your composition. I know you work at it. This stuff's never easy, but you know, when I first saw the shot, I wondered if you'd like red gel the light or something. And it's just so cool that that's natural. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I, if I pulled up the raw, it, it doesn't look that different, you know? Yeah. Crazy. Just a little bit of dodging and burning and, and things like that. There's no you color know, augmentation. I have to say how proud I am of Josh too, because you know when he first came to me, we were having all these discussions about camera settings and and kind of getting it right and raw. And you've just taken that ball and run with it. You've had a bunch of publications in like Nat Geo and Outside Magazine and sponsored trips to the biggest caves in the world that are dead secret about where the entrances are, and you're all connected in with like the the serious cave science. Uh, people out there and it's just it's so cool man so keep showing us pictures and just like I, I just want to see the slideshow man sure <laughs> whoa so this is not another cave with ice but rather than a glacial cave this is a lava tube um, with an ice body in it um, and what's, what's really interesting about a lot of the lava tubes in the Northwest, when I started shooting lava tubes, there was quite a few ice caves. Now we have just a few left. Uh, they, they're all melted out. That's, that's kind of the story of the world, right? I mean, there's places where they're yeah. still prolific, but it's shrinking with global warming. 
The, talk to me a little bit about the lighting for this, because that's that's one of the things that's just amazing is how much gear you're carrying down and how much attention you're paying to lighting, and then putting your subjects in there is just so sweet. Yeah, so I think for this shot, um, I use a few like speed lights and mm. one LED panel. Uh, so behind the subject to the right in the corner, I hid an LED panel over there. Um, the problem with shooting ice, same as like shooting a wet rock, you know, is even with a diffuser, a flash can make a really harsh, um, you know, blown out highlights. Like if you were going to shoot a piece of tin foil with a flash. Uh, mm. So, yeah, you really have to be careful. Um, but I feel like this this one is successful. It's a little harsh in spots, but. No, I, I love like it. it the scene. Well, in the backlight, the way you've got it backlit shining through the ice and then the headlamp on the Spelunker is just awesome in this. I just, I love the positioning of everything and that, that, that line that just takes us right through the frame and, you know, being a little bit brighter back there where you put the panel just draws the eye. It's, it's great. And there's just enough shadow detail in every bit of it. It's awesome, man. Love it. Such a beautiful place. I mean, it's hard to take a, it's hard to take a bad photo there. Yeah. Well, but it's not easy to shoot in pitch black <laughs> caves, man. It's awesome. Thanks. Keep Should I go on? Yeah, do it. All right. You know, I, I'd say, you know, throw up another photo and we should talk a little bit about your, your gear evolution too, what you use now and what you used in the past. And Sure, I'll switch it up. I'll go to a landscape shot. Nice. So this is from the Grand Canyon mm -hmm. uh, from a, I think a 27 day or maybe a 21 day trip uh, mm -hmm. from last year, right before the pandemic and did a little hike, a little scrambling to get up on this ridge and yeah, just, just waited for the sun to set, waited for the perfect moment. And, and it's really, you know, I like how subtle how subtle the edit is on this. It's really nice. All the shadow detail you want, not overdone. And the placement of those cactuses are just perfect. That's what I love about the photo actually is, is the, the way the, the cactuses frame mm -hmm. and kind of balance, balance out the composition. They're like a gateway. It's really yeah. nice. I love the diagonal of the river too. It's just a great composition. So what what gear are you shooting with today? You're still your DSLR for kind of the durability, right? At this point, um, I've shot with mirrorless and, and DSLRs. Um, okay. I'm really sad because you know I, I shoot right now with a Canon 5D Mark IV, and mm -hmm. I just love the 5D cameras, just the way mm -hmm. they feel on my hand, and just how quickly they they turn on when I need to take a shot right away. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Canon is, is done making DSLRs, which is a bummer. So I guess I'll slowly switch over to mirrorless and those are great cameras too. So I'm not, you know, there'll be some growing pains, but it'll happen. I, I, but yeah, go ahead. I haven't heard a single person who picked up an R5 that isn't super enamored with it. So <laughs> exactly. Even Mark Adamus is shooting with the R5 now. So yeah. Yeah. And I've heard you can do a one second handheld uh, exposure. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, to uh, using a yeah. tripod a little bit less. That'll be really fun. Like for instance, yeah. a lot of these shots we're looking at are the last three shots were taken uh, with a with a Gitzo tripod with a really right stuff head, ball yeah. head. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I'm I'm pretty sure this was shot with a 16 to 35 Canon yeah. lens. Nice. That's a great lens. I like the sun stars from that lens too, which you had that beautiful sun star in the headlamp in that last shot too. Keep rolling. Let's see some more stuff. You got it. This is another one of my, one of my favorite photographs. And this scene has been, has been photographed quite a bit. This is oh, yeah. the subway from exactly. zion national park but there's something about i think for me this photo uh that really worked mm -hmm. and i know a lot of photographers paint in this this light here mm -hmm. uh, but this is this is like you know 
an hour before sunset and you can see from this rock right here that all this light is is real this isn't a photoshop experiment where i augmented things and no, the color of the right. water um also because i've been here several times and i've and i've been there when the, the color of the water is just like brown so mm -hmm. just everything kind of lined up for me on the on this this image uh, i was really happy with it I love when that happens and it's really cool how you got into the flow right there for the for it to just be pulling you in. And again, you put a person in just the right spot to give us a sense of scale and in the spot where they're lit, right? Really, really nice. And what's your shutter speed on this? Do you remember? It's longer. It's like a second or two seconds or um probably about Maybe two second. seconds, yeah. 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 Not too long because the person's sharp and people can only hold so still. But long enough oh, right. that, that flow is is rolling through really really nice cool stuff and i definitely use a polarizer for this shot too for those mm -hmm. who are interested yeah which makes sense Slow, slows your shutter down a bit plus you're seeing through to the rock instead of the glare on the water exactly yeah it really helps with with glare on the rock here and mm -hmm. on the water exactly it's beautiful beautiful okay. all right let's let's go to the grand canyon again Everybody loves the Grand Canyon. This is another photograph that I'm I'm really happy with. Um, now this is the granaries, which has been photographed a lot as well. And the funny thing about this photo is we hiked up there, it was cold out, and I was getting ready to shoot. My camera battery died. Oh. And my buddy who is the subject in this photo was like, hey, could be that your battery died because it's so cold. So I <clears throat> breathed on the battery, put it in my pocket, held it in my hand, put it back in my camera and had one bar. So I was uh, able to take this shot. Um, this shot was taken just as the stars were coming out. So mm. the very end of the blue hour. So we still have light on the yeah. rocks. If I waited another 10 minutes, you know, it would have yeah. been really hard to get any light in the canyon and uh, just a headlamp um, to light up the the granaries, the like little stone structure so on the right. He's wearing the headlamp, lighting them for you? Yep, exactly. Sweet. That's a great idea. Those are really nice. Too cool. Another thing I like about the shot is the, you know, the contrast in colors, the blue yeah. and the orange rock. I really gravitate yeah, towards that. And just for fun, if you want to look down here, you can see our, our camp and our boats. Sweet. <laughs> that looks like a trip I would have loved to have been on. Yeah. All know. right. Let's see the next one. Let's do another canyon. Oof. So Sweet. this this shot is from Big Creek Canyon, which is probably my favorite canyon um, in the Pacific Northwest that I've been to. There there are other really nice canyons as well, um, and this is kind of like caving without a lid. It's called canyoneering, canyoneering. and um, basically you're just like exploring the drainage, you know, get in at, at some part of the creek, preferably you know as high as you can and and then um, either do a shuttle or hike back out. Um, but yeah, what I like about this, what this shot is, it's just really exciting to me. It like has that, that like power of nature. You can almost like hear that water because it looks just so like rushing and intense and cold and the greens are popping because it's, 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 it's in the springtime. You know, one, one of the things I love about it is just the way that it pulls your eye. I mean, your eye goes straight to the person, obviously. And you can feel this like they've come this way. And then you've got water rushing through this way, kind of carrying you out to the other corner. And then you roll back. And it's like sometimes successful images, just it's the way that it leads your eye through the frame and then back to your subject. And this does a really nice job of that. This one makes me want more, too, because you can't see, like, you know the canyon continues, but you really you can't see, but it leads to the top left. Sweet. So there's a little bit of, adds a little curiosity for me as well. It's just super cool. All right. Okay. Let's go to 
Oof. Southeast. So Dude. this is this is also um, a cave, or I guess it's a it's a pit that is photographed quite a bit. So I wanted to try to get my own take on it. So I wanted to decided to shoot it at night. Um, this shot I used an old vintage uh, flash bulb. So basically, it looks like a light bulb. It's filled mm -hmm. with explosive magnesium powder. And it's a one-time use. And I mean, the reason why we use these is because if you look at like a speed light, you know, it has a like the light emitting light emitting component of a, of a speed light is a, is a rectangle. Now, right. these flash bulbs have an omnidirectional, you know, light light emission. Goes every um, direction. Yeah. Yeah, and and this this flash bulb has a guide number of like. 450 feet or something so it was just substantially four or five times brighter than than a speed light um so so my question is you know how do you do your calculation for this because obviously i mean you're doing a shot for blue hour and the exposure for the stars at the trees at the top of the pit right i mean that's your well, base exposure or did you or did you composite that in no, it's, it's a single exposure. It's a single yeah, exposure. So how do you how do you, how do you make sure that you that you're not like blowing the canyon wall out for an exposure for the night shot? Well, think about it like this: I only really have to expose for the flash, right? Um, so it just. Flash goes off. It goes off one thirtieth of a second. Sure, sure, and sure, then sure, sure. People keep your headlamps off, and yeah. you know keep the shutter I mean, open for twenty five seconds. Of to course, expose the night sky. Yeah. yeah, I was. I guess I'm thinking about more of a constant light. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But well, yeah, the only the only light, just one flash. Well, so yeah, you know what the exposure for that flash in that space is because you've been using them enough. And then, right. yeah, that's happening very, very quickly. So you don't have to worry about it. You can just leave it open for the stars afterwards. Sweet. Yeah, that's that's yeah, Exactly. Just... As, long, as long as people keep their headlamps off and yep. be patient for yep. 30 seconds or 25 seconds or whatever the exposure was to, ex to get the, the stars. You subject did an awesome job staying still on that log. It's oh, really, yeah, that's, really cool. that's Riley Blackwell. She, she did an amazing amazing uh person to collaborate with on photos really cool stuff man beautiful all right yeah let's do another i love the nearly fade to back black framing in that and just the shape of it is just ugh, super cool thanks Hudson. let's see we'll get out of caves for a minute and we'll go to ugh. this location um which is in california and this is a composite. This is using a technique called time blending. Mm -hmm. So one exposure is the bottom to three fourths mm -hmm. of the image. So right. the light hitting the rocks or the mm -hmm. concretions. And then just the top, the color in the sky happened maybe 15 minutes later. So I just kept the camera on the tripod and then yeah, I just combine them later. I do a lot of that. It's funny when, you know, people are always talking about sky replacements and this is sort of like my style of sky replacement is generally just because the clouds were better at one moment and the light on the foreground was better at another moment. And I just stayed in the same spot and it's a piece of cake to blend those kinds of images because they naturally fit and they look natural. Like trying to bring a sky in from some other place that's completely different. It, it, it's so hard to get things you know, you can usually sniff it when you do it like this. I would have never known that, you know, I mean, maybe because that does look like post sunset cloudscape and the, but the lights all the right direction, the clouds are being lit exactly the same as the rocks are being lit, you know, because this, they're up higher still catching that last light. It's really sick. Nice job. Thanks. Yeah. Mo most of these image are images are, are, you know, a single exposure. Um, yeah especially if we're shooting for magazines they they really want it to be a, a single exposure but well you know i mean most places will 
I mean, if you explain what you did right there, nobody's going to have a problem with that. All right. I can't imagine. Uh, there are certain there are certain rules. It just depends on the publication. Yeah. I remember I did a fire lit shot with the moon rising. Just like, you know, it was more wide angle as a sliver of the moon rising in Zanzibar with these two people sitting by a fire on the beach. And I just put a speed light with an orange gel to match the fire and just lit them for an instant and did exactly what you did in the cave. I left it open to expose the moon. And I did this travel article on Zanzibar and the editor's like, well, we don't do composite photos. I'm like, this is a single frame. They're like, tell, you, tell me how you did it. And when I explained it, they're like, Oh wow, yeah, that's good to go. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know, I, I think I think that's a really good thing to mention. I, I love um having my camera in the right white balance and by using the tungsten gel, yeah. you can have your camera and have you know in the right white balance and have a blue sky. Yep. Um yeah, that that's a huge, huge game changer right there, Hudson. This is a beautiful Milky Way shot, man. Yeah, so this is this is uh, Marble Gap, Marble Mountains, uh, mm. which is in Northern California, and mm. there's nothing really that special about this photo except it just looks good to me. Um, <laughs> just, just, uh, just, it just wor worked out. Did you is is this a composite or is it a single frame? A single frame. Wow, there's just enough background illumination. Yeah, it's crazy. There's just like really nice, um, just la you know, not a lot of light pollution in the area. There's not, but at the same time, there's enough light that you're getting really nice detail on the face of that of that, which is just nuts. You know, I've actually had this happen like with sea stacks on the Olympic Peninsula where it's because we had a little oh, tiny yeah. LED lantern, you know, in our camp. And it's it's hundreds of yards away from the sea stack that I'm putting the Milky Way behind and yet just enough light that it's glowing that way. And that's caused me to like take take loom cube panels out with me and sometimes like, you know, I'll set them up long ways away at a super low setting. And then when you go into post-production, you realize, well, there's just enough lick of light from that thing, you know, in a warm, with a warm gel that it's like giving me just everything I need for shadow detail. I don't know what's lighting this, but it's super cool. Was that photo that you're mentioning recently on the Hoyas Instagram? Uh, well, that's a different one. That's down in, that's down in Bandon. I actually purposefully did that one with loom cubes. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a beautiful image that, that really is a success. It's yeah. Awesome. I've been, you know, I'm, I'm doing more composite stuff with Milky Way now because the move, shoot, move star tracker. It's this really lightweight. Well, it's like two extra pounds in your bag with the tracker and a spare ball head. And it, it's just like letting your camera flow with the Milky Way for the one shot and going to like 500 ISO in 90 seconds and getting pinpoint but almost no noise and then just reset it and shoot your scene and just blend the two is it's it's pretty amazing. I mean, I'm just finding like not having that noise in the sky is so great in post production, but you know, I've, I've tried the star stacking, you know, doing a whole bunch of frames and then blending them to try to get less noise. I've tried, you know, the, the old 500 rule and the new MPF rule and the star tracker for me has just become super addictive. <laughs> I, just, I would love to play with one of those. I never have. Oh, we'll have to get out and do it. I'll show you. It's fun. All right. So let's keep rolling. You've got such fun stuff. We'll switch it up com completely. This is more <laughs> lifestyle in the cave. More about storytelling, I guess. Um, oh, look at less, those. Less, those less, are bruises. Uh, those are bruises, yeah. Oh. This is exploration team. They're underground for, I don't know, oh, 10 days or a week or something. And I was on a photo trip with, with just a couple other guys, and we spent four or five nights in the cave and we met up with them and, and photographed their camp. And it just was a great moment. No one's 
somehow I was able to set up flashes. I think there's four flashes. And I just kind of very quickly ran around and set them up and got a candid shot. I mean, I took that and no one is really paying attention to what I'm doing. That's amazing. Well, because you're the crazy guy running around putting little things on the ground. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, poof, that's great. I was just going to ask you how many lights, because there's a lot of lights going on here. Yeah, I think there's four speed lights. That's great. Yeah. Really nice job. Thanks. Yeah, I, you know, this is definitely a bit of luck here. Yeah, so, but it, it, well, no, it's hard. You get, you got to work hard to get to those moments where the, where you know what to do when you get that luck. It's great stuff. And, you know, the lighting of this thing, you got to remember, you know, that all this light is provided by you and some headlamps, I'm sure. Maybe a lantern back in the corner or something. Wow. Exactly. Um, yeah. And this is 1,500 feet underground. I mean, this isn't, geez. like, that's the, that's the hard part sometimes about my images is like, it doesn't matter how hard it is to get to the location if it's not a good photo <laughs> yeah no totally but this is like totally. a tremendous amount of work you know yeah. taking 40 pounds of uh camera gear camping gear food stove yeah. extra clothes swimming rappelling climbing well and just like the mountaineering and, stuff and ski mountaineering stuff i love to do it's like you're out there with all these people doing that and then you're carrying all the extra stuff to capture images of it at the same time. So you gotta, you gotta keep up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You're carrying more and yeah. you just have a lot more psychic weight. You know, you just, mm -hmm. you're, you're not distracted, but you're taking into consideration all the safety things, you know, manage, managing the gear, managing your own energy and, uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of multitasking going on when cool. you're shooting an expedition. Well, show us a few more, and then I want to make sure that everybody knows where to go to find more of your stuff. This is another <clears throat> yeah another photo that I'm really proud of. I just I love this image. It's really simple, um, but it just <laughs> has such an alien look to it. It just I, I keep going back to it. I just love it. And this is also a pure imagination cave. And if you remember the first image I showed uh, where mm -hmm. the water is illuminated in red, it's actually the same place, uh, but in the winter time. And that's a frozen uh, waterfall basically flowing in. Exactly. Yep. Frozen and waterfall. This is, it's so Ridley Scott and it's so sharp edge to edge. This is beautiful stuff. What do you know? Do you remember what your aperture was on this? F11 for yeah. sure. Cause I was shooting with a Canon 16 to 35 Mark II, which yep. is a really wonky lens. If you're not shooting at a higher yeah. F stuff, I mean, I, it just would get so soft and vignetted in the corners. So e even with focus stacking capabilities and things, I find my F11 is what I love to work with in the landscape on most of my, you know, when you really want to maximize depth of field. It's just beautiful. And that, and that 16 to 35, all the Canon 16 to 35s have beautiful stars, and that's a nice F11 star. It's super cool. I love the yeah, that stars. It, it, was, it was nice that this headlamp has yellow, because if it was just pure white, I feel like it would get lost a little bit. It's cool. It probably cool. wouldn't where you placed it, but it's cool. Really, just a cool. little bit of color. I feel like. Show us another of... couple faves here. We could go on all day, but. What do you think? Show one more. Yeah, two. Let's do two more. I just want to keep. More. <laughs> Pick a couple more. So I'll show you. I'll show you this one just because this is my buddy. Lee White, who passed away last year in a in a car accident, he was like a uh, just filled with enthusiasm and passion. Was just an awesome climber. He would um, specifically in caves. You go to an area in a cave where it may continue on if you free climbed or did a bolt climb, and that was his thing. Um, wow, what a shame. Super cool guy. Yeah, young. I think he was 32. Was he from around here? Uh, he, li he lived in Tennessee. I think he lived in Chattanooga. But, I mean, he lived in his Jeep 
<laughs> he was like a dirtbag caver. Uh, this shot was really hard to capture because if you can see the guy in red is attached to a rope. Yep. Uh, Lee, who is in the center, is on a rope. And I am also connected to rope. a rope. And like just opening a pelican box, uh, like basically I'm holding my backpack <laughs> and very carefully opening a pelican box to get my camera out. And it's really loud, complete darkness. Um, I think the guy in red had a, had a flash and then I had, I had a flash. So it was just two flashes wow. and handheld That's, well, just, and just wow. really, really would be really easy to, to slip or drop, drop something. Um, but yeah. Better um, to drop something than to slip, but yeah. Yeah. If it doesn't <laughs> hit somebody like for yeah. instance, yeah. Yeah. For instance, like <clears throat> this shot. Oof. from Nat Geo assignment in 2018. This is a 300 uh, foot shaft called Son of a Pitch, which is in Sistema Watla. Now my tripod, I'm hanging from a rope and then my tripod is affixed uh, to a wall with a bolt, right? So like the center column of your tripod that you would yeah. like attach weight on, you know? So that yeah. is with a quick like three to one piece of cord attached to a bolt that is on the wall right and then my sure. camera is just looking straight down um so yeah Ooh. if you drop something here you hurt somebody you could knock them out and then you'd have to rescue them while they're unconscious on rope so yeah there's a little bit of stress um yeah. but these guys were really great to work with super competent um, yeah. rope access guys so how's the light behind him? I mean, so he's looking up at you. There's a light like. Yeah, light. so he has a flashbulb dangling from his harness. That's what I was going to say. It looks like it's hanging off of him. That's awesome. And if you look at his hands, he's he's like actuating it manually. <laughs> wow. And then there's actually a, another cable yeah. that you can't even see that is below oh, him. Sure. It's like behind a wall or behind a cliff edge or whatever and then you can see another guy at the bottom so basically it's like you know open the shutter yell at everybody to fire they fire <laughs> and then close, the, close shutter. the shutter and just pray that it that it worked out wow that's awesome man and then the the thing about the flash bulbs too are like they're not synced like speed nope. lights, yeah right and we could have used those, but the thing is, is that the shape of the pit is, is circular, right? So there's a huge advantage to yeah. using flash directional. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what you need, you need like an omnidirectional speed light <laughs> to be designed. <laughs> That's well, really I do, powerful. I do <laughs> have some of those too. I have some vintage Sunpack 120Js that have glass um, right. tubes. Heads. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Um, but yeah, they're temperamental. <laughs> Sweet. Well, dude, that's just. Uh, do you, you have one more you want to show, or is that is that? What do you think? Uh, this one's pretty rad, yeah. I think, in my opinion. This is uh, Pine Creek Canyon, and mm -hmm. yeah, just using reflections. You know, I had my camera about an inch off the water here, and I'm standing in the water. <laughs> Nice. up to my chest so just being careful not to slip so i don't dunk my camera in my the water gear. beautiful i love that reflection sweet well we'll jump out of the share and we'll uh we'll... there we go let me make sure we're back in uh side by side view dude such cool stuff and so inspirational you know since since having the kiddos i've been on a few less big massive adventures and more being around home Mr. Dab, but I'd love to get out doing some adventures with you. We got to make it happen now that they're getting a little bit bigger. Um, just beautiful work. And your work has just evolved and gotten better and better and better. Um, and you're mainly your stuff, your, your Instagram, you're, you're big on Instagram. That's your big place that you share the most. Yeah. My, thank you so much for saying that Hudson. That's, that's really, that's really nice. Thank you so go, much. Go, like, go check you. out Josh. Josh underscore Hydman on Instagram. 
18. And, and I'll, uh, I'll put a link. I'll put a link in the video's description. If you guys click on the title to the video or show more, I'll put a link to Josh's Instagram there. So make sure you go check out his other stuff because this is just scratching the surface of all the fun stuff he's been up to. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me, Hudson. Yeah. Hey, you know, Josh, we, uh, I'd love to, I'd love to have you more. It'd be fun to, to get together, do an adventure or something. And, uh, we should definitely have you in an office hours at one point, just talking about adventure photography or carrying gear and that kind of stuff. You should at least pop in on one of those. I know you've got a class when we generally hold them, but we'll try to figure something out where we can schedule something like that. And just, I'd love to get out shooting with you before too long. It's been way too long and we haven't really we haven't really ever done the big adventure shoot that we should eventually go do. So we got to go do something fun. And uh, just a note to everybody, uh, make sure you sign up for Office Hours, um, HudsonHenry.com slash Office Hours. Check out Josh's link in the uh, video's description. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, Josh. Awesome to have you, man. Thanks again for, for coming and sharing all the cool stuff. Stoked. Thanks, guys. All right. We'll see you next week.